Hey, everybody. Super exciting chat today. We are live with India and Airtel, one of the leading digital transformation companies in India, talking about IoT today, a very interesting and informative topic. Abhishek, how are you? I'm good, Ivan. Thank you so much. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for being here. I know it's getting late, so we'll dive right in. Uh, for those in North America or even Europe who perhaps don't know who Airtel is, maybe give us the big picture and uh, about you and, and the company. Sure. So so Airtel is a telecommunication company in, in India. Um, actually, globally, we have uh, we have operations all over the Indian subcontinent and, uh, and in Africa. We're probably the third largest telco globally in terms of wow. customers, number of customers. So, so yeah, pretty big. Uh, Airtel is, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a 25 year old company. So, so been there uh, connecting India for a very long part, uh, you know, of, of the last couple of years. Wow. It's an exciting time to be in our industry and maybe introduce your particular mission within Airtel digital services and your role. What, what's your, you know, responsibility? Sure. So, so my name is Abhishek uh, Ivan. I am uh, the Chief Business Officer for Digital Services at Airtel. Um, Airtel, uh, you know, we, we undertook a mission a couple of years ago uh, to try and build adjacencies uh, of, uh, you know, for the telco. Because traditionally, telcos have always been in the connectivity business, whether it's uh, SIM or mobile connectivity for B2C or broad, broadband and wired connectivity for the, the B2B customers or the enterprise customers, right? We felt uh, digital services uh, built at the edge of a telco could really build out, you know, a digital services business. So so our mission is, you know, a couple of areas, cloud, security, IoT, CPaaS. Uh, those are the areas we are going after uh, as digital services. And it's, it's, it's been going great. It is indeed. And, you know, the digital transformation happening in India is so fascinating to watch from the outside. And we're going to pick one particular topic. I could probably spend a couple hours chatting with you, but let's talk about your IoT initiatives. In particular, a really interesting one for me in a smart meter deployment in India. Tell us about the landscape there and why smart meters? Why did you pick that as an investment area? Well, I think I think India is a large uh, country, right? We are we're talking about <laughs> over a billion, billion and a half people, right? And uh, and power uh, utilities is 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 a key cornerstone to the success of every every country, right? And and what happens is uh, the, the power systems in India or the energy systems in India were a pretty legacy, and and they built mm. over a period of time, and uh, this leads to a lot of last mile losses, pilferage. Uh, just the operational effort of connecting, measuring, billing customers, and eventually even the analytics, right? Just just understanding who uses how much electricity and and how do we sort of design grids for their most optimal performance, right? These are the issues that the nation is facing. So, so what the government has done is it's launched a very large program to digitize and create 250 million connected smart meters in the country. Wow, and, and 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 you know that's it's a, it's a huge mission. I think it's it's amazing because uh, it really is building our digital public infrastructure, right? And 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 these meters, when connected, will give the government significant leverage to controlling distribution of energy. Just the analytics around how to power their grids, how to design their grids. I think I think it's a it's an awesome initiative. Awesome indeed, and energy is the top of everyone's mind given the turmoil in that space and our needs. Uh, but let's talk about the technology behind it. Everyone's been watching 5G uh, initiatives in India, very exciting. And of course, we think mobile and voice and broadband, but you know, smart meters is not something we've seen here in the US, at least with 5G. So tell us behind the scenes, you know, how is 5G Will it, you know, power these these meters, and what's the functionality behind that? So, Ivan, uh, currently the meters are on four G, and they're mm -hmm. they're all wireless connected uh, the meters, right? So they typically have an IoT SIM card, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, we we've developed two technologies. Four G is of course rampant, and and it's, it's probably available in every corner of the country. 
what we've also done is we've we've also adopted an NB IoT sort of uh, uh, technology, right? The advantage is some of these energy meters they're they're in basements of of houses. They could be in areas which aren't really uh, uh, on the surrounding of the building, right? So we wanted an additional throw of uh, of the radio signal to sort of penetrate deeper into the building, right? That's because that's mm. where the meters are. Uh, so we use a combination of um, 4G and NB-IoT, uh, you know, for connectivity of these meters. Wow, what a, what a great uh, solution for that kind of diversity. And it, you make it sound simple, but of course, there's a very complex set of collaborations behind the scenes uh, uh, between Airtel and other stakeholders. How does that come together? How do you work with government bodies, the energy providers, other sort of middlemen to deploy these kind of solutions? So Ivan, what we've done is we've we've struck a few partnerships, right? And and if you look at the full stack in the smart meter, right, it starts with the meter, the physical meter, the meter being connected, mm. uh, software services which are cloud-based, and eventually also have to maintain connectivity and security across all of this, right? So what we've done is we've created a very innovative package for the distribution companies where we will actually give them connectivity, cloud security, and the software needed for managing these meters as well as you know authentication of these meters as a single stack. And we've also sort of innovated the way we price it. All of these services, while they have their individual pricing mechanisms, we've sort of bundled this up at a per meter per month price. So it's, mm. it's super simple. A discom can start with 100,000 meters or 5 million meters. It'll just be a simple per meter per month price for the entire stack. So everything oh, what a, what a but great... the physical meter is what we partner and deliver. I see. Well, what, what a great value add you're offering there. I remember as a kid, you know, the meter man would come knock on the door and you'd have to let him in the house and you'd go in the basement. And it was, uh, yeah, I think that's in a lot of the world, that's still how it's being done, sadly. Uh, you know, talk about your sort of digital platform. It's more than just IoT. You you offer a whole array of services, but talk about the platform you're building and and how it's, you know, delivering value in terms of, you know, the and reliability and efficiency and, you know, the ROI that your partners are looking for. Absolutely. So I think, Ivan, what we've done is uh, eventually the core ingredient of every one of our services is still a telco service, right? In this case, it's our, it's our wireless connectivity service. Uh, our platform primarily exposes and abstracts these services out in the form of APIs, mm. right? When we do that, uh, we can build any kind of software around the API to then provide the end-to-end -end service. So, so essentially our platform the first slice of our platform is this abstraction of telco capabilities as APIs. The second slice is our build partner piece where we actually bring in the feature and we deliver the service uh, to our user. And the third slice is what we call managed services because uh, there's a lot of configuration. There's a lot of service or human element towards the entire service, right? So our ambition and our goal is to simplify this for our enterprises, right? That's why we look at the full stack and we look at foundational or core capabilities. We look at the software as well as the, the digital capabilities and we look at managed services as, as the full stack. So that's the Airtel digital platform for you. And IoT is just one use case that traverses across mm. the three slices. Very nice. Yes. Uh, I think a lot of telcos have been criticized for just being or providing pipes. So it's nice to see all that innovation happening today. And um, you are known as a leader in the IoT space in India, and not just with smart meters, things like connected cars and other huge opportunities, connected vehicles, I should say. What did you learn in that space uh, over the years, over the decade, as you yeah. um, build out your smart meter initiative? So I think I think India is is very diverse, and if you if you look at the various use cases, right, the smart meter use case is pretty large, but uh, but I have two very interesting use cases that India has, has been after. One is your like like you said, the connected cars, right, providing connectivity to moving vehicles, right, whether it's it's uh, tracking EVs for their battery consumption and 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 they're running in the day, or just pure entertainment connectivity for 
high end vehicles right iot has always been present there the second innovation and, and a very interesting one and this one you must come to india and see is something called a sound box right now india has got a lot of languages right but when you go to one of the smallest stores and you want to make a payment in that store all you need to do is scan a qr code right oh wow and and pay a certain amount of money and it announces that amount of money in your local store so even if the local the local store doesn't have to deal with cash doesn't have to deal with change doesn't even have to deal with who paid how much because it'll just announce right mm. these sound boxes are actually exclusively powered by airtel in india so just just wow. two very simple innovation cases like one is the connected cars the, the the you know the connected vehicle piece and the second is the sound box i think and 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 i'm not talking about small numbers i'm talking about tens of millions <laughs> of these in the country <laughs> that's phenomenal and how did you bring together that user experience that sort of user interface is that something you 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 develop in house because that's a little unusual i think i think for us uh, it's been a combination of build and partner so in in the soundbox we partnered with uh, you know the likes of paytm phone pay uh, and we co built the solution with them nice well it's uh, it's really intriguing um so we've all seen iot the the rapid adoption the, the the new standards the new use cases emerging i was at mobile world congress and it was just uh like a kid in a candy store everything imaginable from drones to to um home security and and on and on and on how are you preparing for sort of the next wave of iot adoption not just smart metering and enhancing that but other applications with narrowband uh, iot I think I think for us uh, what's interesting is uh, is the scale and managing scale and resiliency of of a product right uh, today mm-hmm. as a telco we look at 350 400 million customers it helps us build scale in everything that we that we do right so our first principles thinking is how to sort of provide a particular experience at scale if you look at iot there are two large challenges i see that will that will come up right one the sheer number of devices that need to be running in the country uh, to be able to track them to be able to secure them and to be able to uh, you know transfer data from each of these the second is with this huge amount of data how do we build simplistic analytic solutions right and and empower the user who's actually using the iot sim to try and derive conclusion decision making from that right so so for us i think two investments will keep and we'll continue investing in is one strengthening our core to provide scalable and resilient iot connectivity and the second a strong analytics platform so that any use case can sit on top of it so i think for us that's that's always been our approach in in any business right think of it like a platform build the platform resil- in a resilient manner and 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 partner with other more nimble software feature developers so that we can we can sort of scale to a much larger uh, you know sort of range phenomenal yeah working with developers uh, what what a great uh, go to market um and of course you know smart meters energy efficiency is is conservation goal number 1 but there's a lot of talk of it in india about sustainability and environmental objectives of course with so many people uh that is a key key concern what do you see there as you know a design principle like how do you build that 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 sustainable mission into your products and services so i think i, I think one uh, we believe in ensuring that the core is always resilient right and if you look at just the smart meter contracts they run into 10 years each contract is 10 years right so 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 when we look at how to deploy iot utilities or or smart meters right or we look at how to manage them how to monitor them all of this is built for decades to come so i think mm. i think the first principles of a solution are always is this long term and will it need very little physical intervention to run so i think that's that's been the golden principle for everything that we do as an organization wow that's very admirable uh there So I, I imagine the smart meter initiative must complement a lot of other initiatives. I'm thinking the technology that you're developed could be applicable to 
remote patient monitoring or, you know, the hospital at home kind of concept. You must have lots of ideas about other digital products within the ecosystem. Can you give us a peek into what else you're working on in the IoT space? So I think I think IoT, we've kept it simple. Uh, like I said, we believe in one connectivity, which is how do we sort of propagate connectivity to every corner of the country, right? Because connectivity mm. is essentially the the layer that will really ensure decision-making is abstracted, right? Both from the device as well as the location. So that's one. And the second is a strong analytics platform, right? Because everything eventually is built on your ability to understand, manipulate, and build actionability on data. Mm. So so for us, those are those are the things that we'll invest in. We will always look at this as a platform, right? And we'll always partner for use cases. The advantage this gives us is, is we are then a horizontal layer, which is one, very valuable, and second is empowering everyone else. That's a great, great approach. And is this platform in India or outside of India through partners or other, you know, geographies within Airtel? So we've built this for India and and it's scaling very well. We are partnering with other companies and telcos to try and share this technology with them now Mm. and try and build the same platform in other parts of the world. This is something that we've just started attempting. So, so long way to go. Long way to go. Much needed. I wish there was something like this in my neck of the woods. We don't have <laughs> smart meters and one of the smartest cities in Boston. So uh, I hope uh, we, we adopt some of this technology. Uh, what are you looking forward to? Any any travel or events uh, coming up? We just had Mobile World Congress. So that was a big yes. uh, event of that, the year. But huge. what else are you, what else are you excited huge. about? <laughs> so I think, I think, uh, the Mobile World Congress in in Barcelona is like an annual pil- pilgrimage. We all make it. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's awesome. Uh, you do fifteen or twenty thousand steps a day, so so it reminds you of how big, how large <laughs> this this family of telecom partners companies are. So yeah, so I'm 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 I definitely do that every year. Event uh, beyond this, you know, very happy to keep meeting telcos, sharing notes on how. We each of us solve the same problem differently, so that's 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 how I try and and, and learn. Yeah, it's such a collaborative event, uh, so open and and uh, connected, literally, uh, personally, professionally, with everyone in the industry. Hope to see you there uh, next year. And thanks so much for giving us a peek behind the scenes at Airtel, a company many have heard of but really don't know much about. So it's been very informative and insightful. Thanks, Abhishek. Thank you, Evan. Thank you for your time and lovely talking to you. Likewise. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for watching and uh, appreciate your feedback. Take care. Bye-bye.